Jesus, mature in Jesus as a family, and engage the world for Jesus. We've been doing just that over these last four years, and I'm excited to make this video about a new season in Community Grace's life. Uh, it is December 5th in the evening right now, 2023, and two Sundays ago on November 26th, we launched the Building Impact in our community and the world giving initiative. Take a minute to just describe what God says about giving. The Bible describes giving as a two-sided coin, let's say. The first side is your regular faithful giving, and that funds everything that a church does for gospel ministry and outreach in our community and the world. The other side of the coin is generous giving, extra giving for big needs as they arise, for big opportunities that God lays before you, an opportunity to grow our faith and grow our generosity like Jesus. And such is the Building Impact Initiative. This is a special offering, and it finds community grace in a season where we are ready to take next steps. We're ready to take next steps in our obedience, in growing in our generosity. Uh, we are faced with a major need, and we're faced with growing vision and some really sweet opportunities right now to make an impact in our community and our world. All these things come together, and the elders recognize that this is God's grace, growing our church, meeting us exactly where we are, and taking us to the next steps in our growth as a church. Uh, he who's been faithful uh, with little will be entrusted with greater things, and we believe that's happening at Community Grace right now. So, we prayerfully put our heads together and identified and prayed a lot and identified five areas uh, why we're doing this special offering, the needs and the opportunities where it's going to go. Now, I'm preparing and I'm just about finished with a frequently asked question sheet that's going to give much more details uh, than the brochure or anything I'll say on this video gives. So I encourage you to find that on our website or we'll be mailing that out soon as well. So please read that for all the details, and know that our doors are always open uh, if you have more questions about any of these things. Over the last four years, we've been able to address numerous major needs, financial needs and building facility needs uh, that our church has had. And I just want to celebrate with you, because you've been involved in this over the last four years. We have paid off the remaining $105,000 of existing mortgage. Over the last four years, we paid off our lawnmower loan. We replaced every roof on this entire campus. That's three major sections of buildings. We renovated both rental houses. We replaced two main boilers. And we accomplished phase one of updating the worship center's technology and sound. And we are presently waiting on custom cabinetry to, fin it, to finish uh, this great foyer renovation as well. Uh, God has been gracious. You've been generous. And now we're faced with just one remaining major need. That is the main air conditioner. Affectionately called around here, Big Bertha. What is Big Bertha all about? Well, to show you and to give you a little bit of snapshot, I want to thank Pastor Steve Harper, our new executive pastor. Uh, he's been working with the construction companies, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about Big Bertha. All right, so now we're down here in the basement with the guts of what gives us heating and cooling. And this is an air handler. And in here comes from the outside, from the uh, condenser, comes in through the coils here, and the air flows through and up and into the auditorium. And if the condenser is running for the air conditioner, you get cool air. If it's not, and it's coming through these pipes, these are hot ones, this is giving us heat for winter. But our air conditioner is really causing some issues. It's not running fully well. And so this whole thing, the inside of this, is going to be all pulled out. We're going to have new insides, which will help us make this a lot cooler in the summertime. It's been working overtime. God's been good. We've had over 20 years of service from this beast right here. And we usually supposedly get about 15. So God has been good in holding it off. So we are really, really in need of having this whole thing done and taken care of so that we can actually be efficient in what we do also. So this is a, a huge project. We had some guys come in and they said, you know, this is not commercial and this is more than light commercial. This is uh, large enough to be like shopping centers and things like that. And so they weren't even going to give us a bid on it. So we have the bids now because this is a very large unit and we need that in order to heat, uh, heat and cool the area that we have 
in the auditorium and the hallways and such. So this is a huge project, but it's a it's a necessary one for us to be able to reach out to our community, invite them into someplace comfortable, whether it's hot or cold. But in this case, it'll be hot all the time if we don't get the air conditioner going. The two bids that we've received from those qualified companies are both over $100,000. Uh, because of all the other work that we've been doing, our reserves are largely depleted. I'll have you know that last year we started fundraising for the air conditioner with our Christmas offering and devoted $10,000 toward that project, and that is still sitting there waiting to be contributed uh, to this need. But the need is far greater than $10,000, and we do not want to take a loan. We do not want to go into debt uh, on this need. So that raises the question that we have for God. God, what else would you have since we're praying and we have needs, we have opportunities for growing uh, rapidly in every good way? God has led us to adopt the Fulani people of Central African Republic. And when a local church adopts an unreached people group, uh, by definition, that people group, wherever in the world they are, is unreached. So no one is praying for them. No one is reaching them with the gospel. But we have some partners on the ground there, Three Strands Medical uh, Mission, Mike and Myra Taylor, Pastor Tol Zombo. We introduced them last Sunday in church. And we will be, in 2024, um, officially adopting them with a ceremony and a initial prayer walking and vision trip uh, that we are planning to send over to Central African Republic uh, to meet them personally and hear from the Lord exactly what next steps to take. I want to read one thing from Scripture and tell you two exciting things. Uh, there's a lot of biblical precedent for giving. This is a great act of worship for all of us that makes a huge impact. And so I'm going to encourage 100% of you, if you call Community Grace your home church, to participate in the regular giving and in the special giving to build your own generosity. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, uh, King David is preparing his son, King Solomon, and the people to build the temple for God. Major building project. One of the eight ancient wonders of the world. And in 1 Chronicles 29, we see a little bit of a precedent. King David is describing how he's used the national wealth to go so far. And then that wasn't far enough to fulfill uh, God's vision that, that he had received. And so he gave his personal uh, 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 of silver. And there was still more of a need. And so, here's what it says next. The leaders of fathers' houses made their free will offerings, as also did the leaders of the tribes and the commanders of thousands and of hundreds and the officers. So the first person to give was the main leader, the king. Then all the other leaders of the people gave. And then all the people rejoiced. What's significant about that? Last Thursday through Saturday, our staff and elders uh, went away on our biannual staff and elders retreat. We had a wonderful time together, uh, and God really moved among us. The retreat closed with an appeal for the leaders to set the way, much like the leaders of Israel did at that time for the temple. And we took a silent uh, time of prayer and collection, uh, by virtue of post-it notes, uh, turned into, anonymously, to our uh, finance officer, commitments, what the leaders would give just right now, before 2023 closes, just as we launch this giving initiative. Uh, again, this, this initiative will run all next year, uh, but we wanted to see what could we, the leaders, give right now uh, to get things started. And I just want to, to celebrate with you, and I want you to celebrate with us, that the number reported that we're going to give right now, just to get this initiative started, just the leadership team, is $25,000. So we're over 10% of the way there, right from the get-go. And I'm just thrilled about that, and I hope that you are as well. Then we're going to close this year, and I'm going to ask you to, to follow that leadership example and celebrate that and praise God. And give proportionally, not under compulsion, but what God would have you give 
as you're a part of this uh, initiative and the building impact that God is doing through us. We're giving to God and seeing what he's going to do with it. We're going to be sharing a lot of testimonies along the way, stories of impact that's been made uh, in us and our church family, through us in the community, around the world, through other missionaries. We will be giving updates and telling stories all along the way, and it's going to be exciting. But the last thing I wanted to tell you today is a personal story of impact that's being made because of you, this church family, uh, obeying and following Christ, and all by His grace. I uh, got home from work today to have dinner and then come back here uh, to shoot this video. And today, December 5th, 2023, I was informed that my youngest daughter, who's just about to turn six years old, uh, was led to faith in Christ by one of her older sisters. Would you rejoice with me about that as well? And I just want to say that, that is what this is all about. We're doing this for Jesus, to worship the King, to mature in Jesus for the rest of our lives through discipleship and ministry and outreach, and then to engage the world for Christ with that life-saving, eternity-changing gospel of Jesus Christ that she just was added to the number book of life as her uh, sister was describing to her. Rejoice with me on that, but let's get ready because there's a lot more work to do, all for his glory and our joy. He's with us all the time. Uh, would you be in with what he's doing through Community Grace? I thank you. So there's a lot more to say, but that's it for, for now.